My dear skateboard, it's been 56 days since our last night together, and even though you are physically here, it feels as though you are miles away. I miss you. I miss being with you. I don't really miss getting hit in the shins by you, but, you know, that's okay. One day, the snow will stop falling, hopefully. If only there was a skateboard video guide that was made by some cool dude on YouTube to help me get through these cold winter days. You know, I would say that I actually like the winter, and I like the snow, and I like the holiday season. But the second New Year's Day is over, get this out of my face. I'm just sick of it being dark after 2pm, I'm sick of being cold literally everywhere I go, and most importantly, I'm sick of not being able to skateboard. So in this video today, I'm going to show you 5 different ways to help you get through the winter as a skateboarder. Also, before you write that comment, and I know there's someone about to write that comment, the obvious solution would be just to go to an indoor skate park, but if you're like me, your town ain't got no indoor skate park, and what do you want me to do? Get a couple 2x4s and build my own? I can't do that, man. Do I look like someone that could build anything? I can barely build a bear. <laughs> That's stupid. And just because I can't have the FBI coming and knocking down my door, Please understand that all the practices and tips today, you're doing at your own risk. I can't be in charge if you get hurt or break your mom's priceless, valuable vase that's been sitting on the shelf since 1946. I'm not in charge of that. And finally, before we get started, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button down below, it really helps the channel grow. Now let's get rolling. I mean, well, technically not rolling because of the snow, but you get what I mean. One way to get a little skateboard time in is to do the ancient practice that cave people did called carpet boarding. Cool. But of course back then it was called cave boarding, but you know, language evolves or something. Carpet boarding is when you get a fresh skateboard deck or perhaps an old skateboard deck, throw those stanky trucks off, and practice skateboarding on the carpet in your house. Of course, when you're carpet boarding, be aware of all your surroundings. Now I live on the second floor of an apartment building, so I can't get too nutty. But if you have a carpeted basement or maybe live on the first floor of a building, this is going to be really practical for you. Carpet boarding is a great way to learn those basic skateboard tricks, and without those stinky old heavy trucks weighing you down, you're going to be able to focus a lot more on the board movements. Even if you're a beginner skateboarder and you're not really ready to start practicing tricks yet, carpet boarding is still a great option for you. Even just simply standing on your skateboard for a little bit each day is going to get you more prepared for when that stupid snow melts and you're able to get back outside and skateboard. Another great carpet boarding exercise is working on trying to get your feet to different trick positions as fast as possible. Again, this is going to make you a lot more comfortable with those tricks when you're ready to get back outside and skateboard. Now if you're in a position like me and you can't really cause too much of a ruckus and you don't want to break mom's priceless vase, well you can also work on balancing exercises with your skateboard. Now some places online are trying to make you pay like $150 for some balancing skateboard setup, but I say forget that, go to your local gas station, get yourself a 2 liter, fill that bad boy up with water, and you're good to go. Again, please just be very careful if you're going to be doing any of these exercises. You know, don't break anything or yourself. Don't break yourself. But what if you want to get outside and move around a little bit? Well, you could also try snow skating. Snow skating is exactly what it sounds like, but unlike traditional skateboarding, you're going to not be using any wheels or trucks, and you're also going to have to find a way to gain some speed. This could be perhaps finding a big large hill, or maybe even running and just jumping on your board and hoping for the best. Now, some of you may be asking, why not just snowboard? And you definitely could do that. However, snow skating is actually going to help you work on your skateboarding ability as a whole because you're using an actual ding dang skateboard. Snowboarding is a whole nother ball game, folks. And I ain't no ref. Now, some people go absolutely bonkers with snow skating and actually do real skateboarding tricks, but you could easily get that skateboarding fix just by going down a hill a few times on a board. 
It's completely up to you with how nutty and wild you want to get with snow skating, but just keep in mind, whatever board you use is going to get um, obliterated by water and moisture, so make sure you have a backup skateboard for when it's warm again. I'm not saying the only things you can do are carpet board or snow skate. You definitely can just go out and use your real skateboard. However, the hardest part about skateboarding in the winter is trying to find a dry place to skateboard. Now you never want to skate anywhere where it is really wet because the water can ruin your skateboard wood or rust your skateboard bearings and trust me that just ain't a good time. Also, if you do find a place to skateboard, make sure there's no ice on the ground. I hope I'm not the first one to ever tell you this, but ice is slippery, and so practicing skateboard tricks on ice is gonna be way more dangerous. In fact, just stay away from the ice on your skateboard at all. Again, I shouldn't be the first one to have to tell you this. If you're looking for a dry place to skateboard, may I suggest an indoor skate park? If you're lucky, under a bridge, preferably it not being sketchy, under a carport, a picnic site, or even a parking garage. There is a carport in my apartment complex and shocker, it's usually full of cars, but every once in a while everyone's cleared out and I could get a few tricks in if I really wanted to. Of course, skateboarding outside during the winter is not ideal and obviously it's a lot easier to do at the tail end of the season when there's still some snow on the ground, but you ain't gonna freeze to death in like two seconds. Now, nothing can beat real skateboarding, but luckily the scientists of the world have come together and figured out a way for us to skate in the digital space. I'm talking skateboarding video games. Personally, the more realistic skateboarding games like Skate or Skater XL are my preferred skateboarding games to play during the winter time. These realistic skateboarding games can give you that feeling of landing that perfect trick or doing that perfect line. Being able to skate that same spot over and over again really tricks your mind into that process that you go through when you're skateboarding out in the real world. It really makes you try new and different things over and over again just like you would when you're outside skateboarding and that at least helps scratch that skateboarding itch a little bit. If you're a beginner skateboarder, now is a great time to pick up some skateboarding video games because not only will it help you with your skateboard trick knowledge, but it will help you just understand skateboarding as a culture. Of course, even being able to get a few rounds of Tony Hawk Pro Skater in will help you get through the winter struggle, but you know, sometimes watching those insane combos, it just makes me feel like the worst skater on the planet. If none of the previous practices I've mentioned in this video are available to you, don't worry, there's still one practice any skateboarder can do at home. And that's just staying in shape. That's it. Nice. Trust me, from previous years, there's nothing worse than finally being able to go out and skateboard in the spring and 15 minutes into your skate session and you're already exhausted and you're breathing heavy and you're sore. Sometimes when it's spring and I'm finally able to get back to skateboarding, it takes me a few weeks just to get back into the swing of skateboarding. However, if you've stayed fit over the course of the winter, it's going to take you a lot less time to get readjusted to skateboarding. Now look, I ain't no fitness coach, I barely know what a calorie is slash does, so I don't know what the best workouts are going to be. However, I did find an article online titled, um, The Jock's Guide to Skateboard Workouts? Sure. I read through the article and it's actually really cool. It shows you a lot of different exercises you can do to work on your manuals, your kickflips, and even just your pop. Even if you can't do any of the workouts suggested in this article, you can still stay fit by just going on some walks, doing some running, or just staying active in general. Your boy here plays with his little VR set a few times a week because it gets me sweating real good, I don't have to leave the house to do it, and I get to look like a complete doofus while I'm doing it. Where is the camera? So just try to stay in shape, try to stay fit. I know it's easier said than done. I know it's way easier to watch a really cool video of a dog learning how to drive, but just trust me, you won't regret it when skateboarding time comes back around in the spring. So those are some practices that I recommend to help you just survive these long, cold winter months. I hope these practices can help you scratch that skateboarding itch 
but you and I both know there ain't no real way to replace that feeling of just being on the dang board. Thanks for watching this video. Again, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button on your way out, and subscribe if you want to see more skateboarding content like this in the future. And as always, have fun, good luck, and keep shredding the gnar.